important if you want to become a writer or a published author. Now, with that, I am going to hand the rest of this over to Patricia. Yeah, the problem with me just yelling is that I'm getting over the worst case of airplane flu I've ever had, so my voice is kind of bad. Um, <clears throat> you don't know how lucky you are that that is the case. I can talk for hours when my voice is in good shape. Um, but since it isn't, we will sort of get right to the, uh, the meat of the thing. So our, your first guest is author guest of honor, Patrick Rothfuss. He's, he's written two best-selling books, Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear, which it makes all the rest of us very jealous by debuting at number one on the New York Times list. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Look at him, look at him try to be modest. Um, he's a gamer. He plays Dungeons and Dragons, or has in the past. Um, he also chairs, I believe chairs, the World Builders. That was, that was yeah, he put that together. The World Builders uh, charity, uh, which collects the, all the, the freebie books and various other things that people want to donate, uh, usually authors who have gotten like way too many author copies of their foreign editions, and then auctions those off or gives them off and gives the money to Heifer International, which is a charity that buys uh, various animals and, and uh, other things and teaches people in developing countries, you know, to have better lives. It is, it is a really neat charity. I think I sent you a box of book collection last year, so. Um, he also taught English and writing and is, has a, a fascinating blog that is kind of a really good picture of what it's like to jump from teaching writing and doing it as a hobby to suddenly being a best-selling writer and having no idea what you're doing with this. <laughs> um, so that's, that's Patrick. Do you have anything you want to say, Patrick? Yeah, I, I didn't think that I did, but then you brought up world builders. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, really, I was a hobby writer for 14 years while I worked on the book, and then I got published, and suddenly that was my job. And then I accidentally started world builders, which became my new hobby, which then became my new job. Uh, and I, I just would like to say, for those of you that don't know about Heifer International, uh, it is really a marvelous charity. It does work all over the world. They've been in business for 65 years. Um, and uh, World Builders is really a great collaborative effort uh, with a bunch of sci-fi fantasy geeks, gamers, uh, role players, uh, publishers, and everything. People donate books and their time. And then, uh, over the last five years, the community's come together and we've raised pretty much $2 million for Heifer International. So. Now, being painfully honest, because I am from the Midwest, technically worth $1.95 million, right? I can't say millions yet, but we're almost there. Uh, if you're curious about it and you want to come up and talk to me about it at any point in the con, if you want to donate a book, you just want to know where the website is, feel free. I won't chew your ear off about it now, but given the opportunity, I will happily, happily talk about World Builders at great length. So, there we go. Okay, they told me to do this in, in, in a certain order and people didn't sit in that way, so our, our next one is uh, a gentleman who has 
they talk about people who have too many awards to mention, and he really does. <laughs> Um, he has a Hugo for Best Professional Artist, a World Fantasy Award. Uh, it's, it's like half a page. Uh, it's really impressive. Um, and uh, that would be John Picasso. 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 I keep, I keep wanting to say Picasso. <laughs> and it, I think, is a deserved comparison. But, you know, it wouldn't be quite right. Um, his, his art is versatile, it's varied, um, the, you know, he has a lot of it up on his blog or on his, his website, little thumbnails that you can enlarge of all of his, his covers and, and other work. He's done work for some of the biggest and smallest uh, book publishers in the business, everything from Tor and HarperCollins and Del Rey and Penguin to the strangest named publishing, small publishing house, Monkey Brains Books, um, which I think is a great name for a small, a small press. Do you want to say anything, John? Yeah, sure. So hi. Good to see you guys. Um, so I, this is, I'm doing a, what was that back there? I heard that. Good to see you guys. Yeah, thank you. So uh, Spectrum was last weekend, and it was amazing for those of you that were out here. Um, so I'm back here for two weekends in a row. So it's two very different shows. Um, I'll say this, these kinds of cons are, are near and dear to my heart. Um, I, I said in the five o'clock panel that we did um, that I, li I love it when word and picture crowds kind of collide. And this is going to be one of those kind of shows. You know, it is sort of a literary show at heart, but um, we do have both those kinds of communities here, you know, uh, literary and visual. And it's a great thing when they sort of collide with equal measure. Um, I just guess a couple of announcements. Um, 10 a.m. tomorrow, um, I think it's in this room in fact, I'll be doing a guest of honor slideshow. And what does that mean other than early nap time? What it means is uh, <laughs> I show sort of the behind the scenes and the process behind a lot of recent work. Um, we'll be doing a little bit of the behind the scenes on the George R. Martin calendar, but I'll also be showing you some stuff that has just recently been completed, give you some sneak peeks as well. Um, there's something you'll be hearing about from me over the course of the weekend, it's called Lone Boy. And that's a company that I've started to um, create uh, some new projects. One of them is a Loteria deck. Raise your hand if you know what Loteria is in this room. Actually, there's a few of you, believe it or not. It's essentially Mexican bingo. And so uh, this is not the time or place to be going into this one. We'll talk about it more at 10 o'clock tomorrow. But it's, it's going to be probably one of the projects that will define my career, I suspect. How it defines it, there remains to be seen. <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty pumped up about it. So let's pass it on and keep it moving. So thanks a lot. All right. Next comes our editor guest of honor, and Teresa Nielsen Hayden is in the unenviable position of being the only person on this panel that I've known for 30 years. <laughs> um, she has had more influence on the field of fantasy and science fiction as an editor than practically anyone else I know. Um, she has a tremendous devotion to the craft. She uh, runs a, a website called Making Book or uh, Making Light. Making Book is the the the, the yeah the, the the essay book, which I highly recommend. Her her essay on copy editing is is like required reading if you want to be in the book business as a writer or as an editor. Um, she is absolutely fun, and I'm going to tell two stories on her. One is, is one that uh, years ago, Teresa is an otter trainer. It turns out, yeah. <laughs> it turns out that otters, if you, if you, if you want to train a normal animal, you, you wait until they, they're doing something that's close to what you want them to do, and you give them a biscuit. And the animal thinks, oh, she liked it, I'll do it again. And they do it, and you gradually get them to do what you want. Otters, on the other hand, if they do something you like, you give them a biscuit, the otter thinks, this is all according to Teresa, this is the story she told us. Um, otters, when you give them a biscuit, they think, 
Cool, she liked it. Next time I'll do something even cooler. <laughs> Writers are otters, said Teresa. <laughs> Teresa is an otter trainer. <laughs> One of the others, the other story I was going to tell on Teresa is, is very early on, a bunch of us uh, write, uh, writers were sitting around one of the um, publishing parties, which are full of writers talking about the books they've written, the awards they haven't gotten, um, why they should have gotten more money or more awards or a movie deal or whatever. And there are several of us sitting there going, oh God, we have to listen to all this again. And somebody said that in Teresa's hearing and her eyes narrowed and she looked around, she looked at me and she said, watch this. And she turned to the person next to her and said, do you garden? And within 30 seconds, we had a little mob all talking about shade gardens and what plants you put in them and, and whether, and it was, it was delightful. Um, so that's, that, that's Teresa. She is multifaceted and versatile. She's also kind of hobbling around, so you know, don't let her stand too long. She's, she's coming off foot surgery. So Teresa, do you have any revenge you want to take on me? <laughs> While you have the chance? I am perfectly well aware that you have not expended all your ammo. <laughs> Yes, you're, I had forgotten doing that, but yes, I do that trick sometimes, you know. You make everybody just, they take a right turn and they go off somewhere else and it's beautiful to watch. Um, that's, 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 my, that's, that's my second career is just being a moderator, and, which, is, which is really fun because, you know, it's like everybody wants to have a good conversation, but sometimes they need a little help getting there, you know. So you just put up street signs. Um, I guess, actually, I, I know what I should say, which is, if somebody says something really funny and it takes me by surprise and I'm not expecting it and I probably if I'm standing up, I will fall over. <laughs> okay, it's called cataplexy. It's a neurological thing. It's not controllable. So if you're the person who made the joke, you get two points. <laughs> <laughs> because I'd always rather hear the joke even if I fall over and then you have to hold me up, okay? <laughs> Don't <would> accept accepted. <laughs> <laughs> so let us all have a good time this weekend. Okay, your comics guest of honor is John Kovalik. Uh, he does the Dark Tower, Dork Tower. Sorry, I can't even read my own. I can't even read my own own handwriting. He does the Dork Tower camp. Uh, comic on, on online, which is a comic sort of about gamers, <laughs> sort of gamers and fans and, you know, inter trying to interact with the real world and sometimes I'm not doing very well. Um, he is known for, I would say, three things. One is, he, he tells me Munchkin and Apple Sap are his two best games. And for proposing to his wife in his comic strip. <laughs> so that takes a brave man to do that out in public. Or a really overconfident one, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, John Kovalik, do you want to say anything? Thank you so much for having me at this uh, at conquest. And it was neither brave nor overconfident. I'm a cartoonist. So I proposed in a comic strip because if my, if my, at the time, girlfriend said no, I would have had a lot of material to draw. So she said you set of self-defense? Okay. Actually, she never technically said yes, but that's a long story. <laughs> but thank you so much. I'm very excited to be in Kansas City. I went up to the con suite and I saw that there is a uh, taste test going on over the weekend of four different barbecue sauces. So if I'm not at one of my panels, I'll be in the con suite eating your barbecue. <laughs> thank you so much for having me here. Okay, last but by no means least is Christopher Garcia. 
<laughs> now stop that. Um, stop that too. Uh, <laughs> Christopher is co-editor. Christopher owns half a Hugo. <laughs> no, I own a whole Hugo. But no, there are two of them. Yes. He is, is a co-editor of a fanzine which won a Hugo, so technically he got half a Hugo. Um, it, they, they, they do it as two prizes, you know. So he has a, a whole Hugo in his living room, but it really is all. Um, oh yeah. Uh, he, his day job is really interesting. He works at a computer history museum. I did not know computers had been around long enough to have history, but apparently they have enough to fill a whole museum. And he's, he's, he does it. Um, I discovered last night at dinner that he has many opinions and is not afraid to share and um, is very entertaining about it, so I will let him entertain you. Thank you. <laughs> First off, before I do anything, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Joel Phillips in the back there, everybody. I just love doing that when I, you give me a microphone and things go terribly, terribly wrong. Some of you might have seen something at the Hugos back in 2011. Um, I would like to reenact that for you now. Yeah, so that was about it. Um, that's the important part. Um, uh, those of you who weren't there, uh, those of you who were on stage with me, oh, that's just me. Um, it's it, three points. I love barbecue. <laughs> I'm just saying that to put that out to you, that, that just in case you all are going out to Arthur Bryant or anything, and you feel like you have a little leftover, I will gladly take it from you, I will gladly eat it in front of you, and show you my appreciation through the Chris Garcia Appreciative Face Test. This is an appreciative face. This is an extra appreciative face. I love you. <laughs> that, so remember that. So if anyone extra barbecue, that's the way to go. Also, everyone, say hello to Linda, who is currently filming this. And Linda, chew it at him. Wave. <laughs> so throughout the course of the convention, me and Linda are making a documentary series called Five Cons. It's about five conventions, or cons, uh, that take place around the world. We're actually doing uh, the Nova Albion Steampunk Convention um, last week. We're doing this convention. Uh, we're doing the WesterCon in beautiful Sacramento, California. I even managed to say that without any irony. It's amazing. Um, uh, the San Antonio WorldCon, and then to what makes it international is we're doing the World Fantasy Convention in Brighton, England. Um, so we're going to want to talk to you, and also you, Patrick. Just wanted to make sure it's not just this guy. But yeah, so stop. Oh, it'll be a world fantasy. Excellent. Well, then, I know this great place for Scandinavian food. Um, and you... I would, when I say Scandinavian food, I say great. Yes, exactly. Um, so, yes, we're going to stop some of you in the hall and say, hey, we're going to interview you, and you're not going to say no, because I won't make the appreciative face at that. But, yeah, thank you so much. All have been great so far. And, uh, okay. Well, Chris is last for a reason. Jess had this idea. She happened to notice that both our guest of honor and Chris have similar beards, and that it might be a little difficult to tell them apart. So to aid you in telling them apart, we are going to have a beard off. <clears throat> so first, first, I guess, is, is who's up first? Yes, you're going to have. She's going to put her hands over, over from behind, up from behind, and you get to applaud for who has the best beard.
Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. <laughs> Definitely Patrick. <laughs> And now I get to turn it back to Victoria for the end of can, end of opening ceremonies. <laughs> as much as we love our volunteers and our fans for coming and sharing in this joy and fun time, we also like our guests of honor because they give us something to go yay about. So we're giving them a gift to say yay. Thank you for coming to our convention and providing such fine entertainment and good humor for all of us. We're going to have to pass these down, because these are a little breakable. The, name, the names are on the, are on the bag, on the tag. These are personalized. And uh, and I have been told <laughs> you have to share, John. <laughs> That's okay. They'll know you stole it, so you'll have to give it back. Okay. If you'd like to open them, go ahead. <laughs> and the, our potter told us that if you want to hide a can of whatever beverage you care to drink, it fits well inside the mug. <laughs> so if you want to pack a little ice in there, you have a cooler. <laughs> so, somebody got a little enthusiastic and, uh, and joggled my delivery person, so we're going to be replacing that. <laughs> Just so you know. I'm a gamer. I have glue. <laughs> but is it food safe glue? <laughs> Uh, very quickly, if you are a concom or a staff person, can you please stand up and wave your hands since we have some people who are standing who aren't concom staff. Thank you. If you, got, if you guys have questions, these are the people to ask, and they are here to help you. And uh, our last... We like stars! <laughs> yes, give them stars. Give them foil stars. Remember, yellow stars. badges. Yeah, yellow badges are here to help. Purple badges! Purple badges, too, apparently. Basically, it's the people running around looking some mix of competent, authoritative, and totally out of their mind. <laughs> Jesse, do you mind if I throw out a quick announcement? Sure. Real fast. Um, one last thing uh, before we wrap it up. Art show, being that I'm the artist guest of honor, do make sure you spend a little time and it's one of those functions at any convention where a lot of times I hear people say, oh, I didn't make it over there. Uh, it's pretty conveniently located here. I love the circulation you guys have where there's an entry directly into it and an entry off the dealer's room. Do go visit. Not just so much for my art, but there is a, a lot of really neat stuff in there. It's, it's a small art show, but it looks like a quality one. And you're fortunate to have it. You've got people who work hard to put it on. So take a few minutes, get over there, and check it out. Thanks. And Done. Our very last order of business is the fun part, parties! So it is time for party announcements. I will kick it off 1511 both tonight and tomorrow night, 9.30 p.m. The Party of Awesome. There will be drinks, there will be dancing, and there will be, as it says in the titles, awesome. So if you have a party, stand up, shout it out, let people know. Tomorrow, 2 o'clock, in the con suite, we're having a birthday party for my friend Anne. There will be cake. Yeah. Birthday party for Anne in the con suite at 2. Love tomorrow. <laughs> you know there's other parties. I know there are other parties. Just shout it out. Aspect Detroit Fed. We will have a sampling of Detroit beers and the uh, snacks and treats. Time 
clean room? Thank you. Yeah. Just go for it. I love Johnny Depp. Saturday evening, Jimmy will be throwing his traditional room con. It is an entire convention in a room party, and it's a blast. There we go. Any more party announcements? <laughs> uh, tonight, all I know, I'm just throwing this out there, that the other announcement, Phoenix announcement, is throwing a party tonight on the 15th floor somewhere. So, stop by there, we'll stop the door. Phoenix will have a room somewhere. <laughs> okay, is that all the party announcements? Okay. I'm calling it. No more parties. Unless <laughs> <laughs> you really want to. <laughs> yes, we do accept spontaneous parties. Yay! Okay. As long as they're on the 15th floor because we have to be nice to the other hotel guests. <laughs> well, all the it it is the fir it is our first year here. Please don't break the hotel. <laughs> And, and if the hotel likes us, they'll let us come back next year. <laughs> okay. And opening ceremonies is now officially closed. Go forth and party!